According to most experts, the world's climate is changing. It is becoming warmer and wetter, and there are more extremes of weather. Potential effects of this climate change are likely to include more variable weather, stronger and longer heat waves, more heavy participation events, more frequent and severe droughts, more flooding and tropical storms, rises in sea level, and increased air pollution. We know that these climate changes are already affecting the environment in profound ways. The question is, how will these changes affect human health? We'll try to answer that question as we discuss the effect of climate change and public health on today's episode of A Public Health Journal. Welcome to A Public Health Journal, a program that explores public health issues facing our society today and tomorrow. The host of the show is Dr. Ed Ellinger, Director and Chief Officer of Boynton Health Service, University of Minnesota. A Public Health Journal is sponsored by the Hennepin County Health Department, Boynton Health Service, the Minnesota Public Health Association, and the City of Minneapolis. All working together towards the goal of healthy people living in healthy communities. Welcome to A Public Health Journal. Today we're going to look at the effect of climate change and public health. We know that the warming of the Earth's climate is having effect on plants, animals, water supplies, air quality, and the overall ecosystem. A stark, stark example of the effect of these changes was the recent inclusion of polar bears on the endangered species list and a prediction that because of the loss of polar ice, the bears may be extinct by the year 2050. If climate change can have that impact on polar bears, what kind of impact will it have on humans? While no one knows the answer to that question for sure, people have started to look at ways to find the answer. To help us get started on a discussion about the impact of climate change in public health, I've invited Matt Commerce to join us. Matt is a public policy program manager at Hennepin County Medical Center and an adjunct assistant professor in the Division of Environmental Health Sciences at the University of Minnesota School of Public Health. Matt, welcome to our program. Thank you, Ed. And, uh, Despite the fact that this is going to have huge, climate change is going to have a huge impact on, on human health, I assume, I've never had a, anybody on the program talking about it, so this is sort of a, a first step, so I'm glad you're here to do this. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. And, and are there very many people kind of paying attention to climate change and its effect on public health, or is this a relatively new field? Well, I think uh, both statements are true. Um, it is quite new, and I think both for the field of public health as well as almost any professional or scientific endeavor, uh, this theme of global climate change uh, is quite a new one and quite a new uh, confrontation in a sense. Uh, for the field of public health, that's obviously also the case. At the same time, uh, it is certainly the case that there are many uh, experts around the world now who have become very knowledgeable in various aspects of uh, both climate change and its relationship with human health. So we're seeing the emergence of uh, a new set of uh, experts and professionals uh, who are deeply or broadly or both uh, trained in uh, the relationship between the warming of the biosphere and its real and potential impact on human health. Yeah, and as I try to do some research for this program, looking around for various data, a lot of people are saying, this is what we need to look at, but there's not a whole lot of data to really support you know, a change in this direction or another. Are you seeing data sources come up, really sound information about what's actually happening to the environment, particularly humans, as it uh, relates to uh, climate change? Well, I think Ed, that's one of the things that we clearly struggle with all the, all the time in public health that um, ideally we would like to have 20 years of longitudinal data establishing a link between any given phenomenon and an outcome, a health outcome, uh, before we would make pronouncements about causality. Uh, in this case, it uh, presents us with something of a dilemma because when we look at the climatological evidence uh, and what is hypothesized to be the changes in the atmosphere as we go forward in this coming century, um, we see that uh, it, it would plausibly uh, and very likely have significant health impact given our current understanding of what determines public health. However, the data is not yet present uh, to establish causality on many levels. And um, so we're struggling with that dilemma from the perspective of our field and the standards that we like to hold ourselves to. When, when we're talking about climate change, you know, because that's going to be the form, the basis of our discussion, what are we really talking about? What are the components of climate change that you're looking at? 
Well, I, I think uh, as climate change has come to be understood, um, we're generally referring to a warming trend in Earth's biosphere, which is our, uh, the atmosphere, the air that we breathe, and everything around us in the thin layer uh, of life on the, uh, the crust of our planet Earth. Um, as that biosphere warms, uh, it, it has various uh, effects on um, things that will impact our health, and we can talk about that in a moment. But certainly um, the uh, overall concept um, has been one which uh, is well documented. We know that the Earth's surface is warming uh, due to the measurements that have been taken over the past 50 years, and in fact in many places in the world going back much further. Uh, the question and debate, of course, the past 15 years has focused on what the cause of that warming trend is. Uh, obviously many things have been discussed as potential causes and I think our understanding continues to evolve on that level. However, the International Panel on Climate Change, as I think you know, uh, which is the international body of scientists that have looked very seriously at the potential uh, link between uh, the uh, emission of greenhouse gases and the warming of the climate, have determined that there is a 90% likelihood that the warming is largely attributable to human activity and most notably the emission of greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which is of course the result of our use of fossil fuels, both for energy in terms of uh, heating our homes and creating electricity as well as of course transportation. Well, and I know, so, so, the, so the facts are the environment is getting warmer. Uh, that, that seems to be pretty well accepted. I know there's a little bit of discussion and some people dispute the fact that humans have played a role in that, but we won't get into that because we want to really say whatever the cause, human cause or non-human cause for the, the warming of the environment, what kind of impact is it going to have? And what are we seeing on the kind of the physical nature, not among humans, what kind of things? Are we seeing more storms? Are we seeing rising of sea level? Are we seeing ice caps disappearing? What kind of things are we seeing in our environment? Well, I think uh, just briefly going back to the previous point, I would simply like to uh, reiterate that it looks like the evidence is indicating and, and overwhelmingly uh, that uh, the changes in the atmosphere that we're seeing uh, are human-induced. Um, however, as a scientist, one would always want to maintain some level of skepticism, even about the data which we believe is absolutely firm in regards to the warming of the atmosphere. We need to maintain vigilance and continue to monitor that going forward to see if our hypotheses indeed play out uh, as we expect they will. Uh, we also need to continue to maintain our scientific vigilance as regards the underlying causes of that and continue to monitor if uh, and, and explore that relationship. Now the outcomes that we're seeing of course I think some of the things that have uh, grabbed uh, the attention of the media are such things as the melting of the polar ice cap, uh, the warming of the atmosphere itself, uh, the shifting of um, um, disease vectors such as uh, mosquitoes and other um, um, biological disease vectors. Uh, and we can certainly talk about more things which will have very likely a profound impact on health. But I guess to do a review, you might think along the lines of we're seeing changes in air and in terms of what the air carries. So that would refer, for instance, to airborne allergens. Uh, we're seeing changes in the level of pollution and stagnant air, especially in large metropolitan areas. Uh, we are certainly seeing changes in access to uh, clean potable water, uh, and we are seeing shifts in agricultural production. I think if you listen carefully, interestingly this past year, um, as we've seen the rise in food prices, especially rice across the world, if you listen carefully to the media messages, you'll often hear not only economic reasons why the price of rice has gone up, but as well, uh, very often you'll hear storms mentioned as one of the causes. So bad weather, at least in this case, has been a cause of a reduction in rice supply. We know as well that the creation of ethanol has led to scarcity in the, in the supply of corn. And for uh, a number of these reasons, food prices have risen. All right, so with that as kind of a good lead-in, we'll sort of talk about 
the next step is how do these weather changes affect human health. But first, we need to take a little break. We'll be back right after this message. Welcome back. We're talking about the impact of climate change on public health with Matt Commers from the Division of Environmental Health Sciences in the School of Public Health at the University of Minnesota. So Matt, we kind of talked a little bit about the fact that the climate is getting warmer. We're having more and more environmental effects. And, and I think people are knowing that you know, the uh, ice caps are melting. And I mentioned in my introduction that polar bears are being threatened. But what about people? How are these things affecting people? And you know, where would we want to start even to think about how they affects people? Well, let's start with the simple fact of heat. Uh, we know that thermal stress is a major issue, especially for vulnerable populations. As the temperature of, our, uh, of the air goes up, especially in warmer seasons, um, we will see that the most vulnerable among us, most specifically elderly persons and people who do not have access to cooling, such as air conditioning units, will be at greater risk for uh, the results of thermal stress. Uh, that's one um, mechanism by which climate change has already influenced uh, human health across the world. Uh, well, I, I know that in some of the U.S. cities, you know, buildings were built you know, 100 years, 150 years ago for a certain kind of climate. Uh, and, and so we have a lot of infrastructure of buildings and now in places like St. Louis, or Kansas City, even Chicago, uh, you know, increasing number of deaths during the summer among elderly when they don't have air conditioning. Absolutely. In 1995, there was an extraordinary heat wave in Chicago, which is considered to have been responsible for over 700 deaths. I think people around the world were aware of the extreme summer heat in Europe in 2003. Uh, the French keep, of course, extraordinarily good data on mortality, and their epidemiologists were able to show that the uh, death of over 50,000 people in France during that summer is directly attributable to the heat. Now, whether that particular incident of heat is due to climate change, of course, is something that could be debated and we'll never have a definitive answer. Where we will receive our definitive answers over time and looking at the frequency of those types of heat events as well as the duration and intensity. Uh, as we get more and more uh, data on those events, we'll be able to see trends over time. Mm. Now then that temperature must affect air quality. You mentioned that a little bit earlier. How, how is air quality affected by increasing temperature? Well, absolutely, Ed, and that's the second area I wanted to talk about is air quality. Um, we have just recently in 